Welcome back to the shop. It is been a week since the glue, or not the glue up, the dry fit. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna do the sticks probably because then I can get these all shaped right. Um, anyway, we're gonna, I'll, I'll do those edge treatments. I'll get cut some trim molding here for some molding to go into this, to cover, to go on this, on the stick sides of things, on the styles of things. Um, yeah, let's do that first. I don't know, that was weird. Okay, I think I've chosen my orgies are long enough and I think I can get four four strips out of this before I run into this knot or this knot. And it's long enough so that it'll fit the length. And then this one, same story. Um, they're long enough and I think I can get four out of this safely. So the idea for doing really skinny moldings is to cut it on a wide board, slice it off, and then do the next trim and slice it off and do the next one and slice it off. So. First thing I need to do is get this edge. This is the edge I want to start with. I want to stay away from this knot. So this edge is parallel or flat straight. So I'm just going to run this through the table saw. Rip it. Minor thing, small detail, I did not get the thickness the same. And so this is considerably thicker than I need it. Um, I'm gonna figure out what I'm gonna do about that. I think I'm just gonna plane it down. It's gonna lose about, gosh, almost a quarter inch. But it's faster than resawing and I got plenty of this stuff. And yeah, we're just gonna, I'm just gonna, for one of the few times, I'm gonna plane this stock down to about five eighths thick or so, somewhere in there. It does bother me. It does a little bit, but it'll be all right. So we're gonna head over to the planer, get this. Now I have kind of a gauge of the thickness I wanna get to anyway. So we're gonna head over to the planer and do a bunch of planing. Okay, so everything's the right thickness now. I got it perfect. It's just shy of a half inch. So I did lose quite a bit of wood, but it's gonna have to be okay. Um, but I have a problem with my planer that's bothersome. It, it trips the overload a lot ever since I put the Shelix cutter head in there, the bird cutter head. If I take more than, well, that one was only a 64th. It wasn't even a 64th, it was a eighth of a turn. Yeah, a quarter turns a 64th. This was an eighth of a turn. And it was only an eight inch wide board of cherry. It wasn't particularly hard or tough or anything. It just, it just trips. It, it, it overloads and it's really freaking annoying. Anybody knows? Uh, what the heck? Maybe I should send this to Bird and say, hey, what's going on? Um, it's a DeWalt 734, 744, 744, DW7444, 744, DW70, here let's look here, DW734, it's a 734, that's right, the 734 is this one, the 733 was the one that came before it, and the 735 is the big one, yeah, 734, DW734, um, the head, Cuts great, it's just, it trips my overload every time I use it, and it's kind of annoying. I tripped it six times this time, and it's kind of freaking annoying. Do I have to really take even, do I have to treat it like a jump sander now? What the heck? Uh, if anybody knows, that would be really good to, I've waxed the heck out of the tables. It seems to cut, like, it seems like it won't let me cut very deep in the first place, like the like the cutter head's almost a smaller diameter because I can't lower the head as far as I used to be able to. Like I can't put it in there when taking more than a, I couldn't even get it to take more than a 32nd at this point. Like the, the body of the head gets in the way. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm a little bit annoyed by how hard it is to get this thing to just stay running. I don't know if it's the planer's fault because the planer ran fine for eight years, 10 years. Chase, I've had this a while. 
Yeah, the planer's been working great. Maybe the brushes. Maybe I need to change the brushes. I'll take a look. I don't know. But if anybody knows, if you ever had your planer suddenly just be more temperamental once switching out to the bird head, let me know. Anyway, moving back on to the project. All right, did a little testing, and I got a stick that's the right size that works well. This will do okay. We'll use this. Um, and then um, my next task, or the... Now we can go ahead. I've got it figured out and I can go ahead and cut the rest of them. So this is just going to be a case of do a cut on this, take it over and rip off the piece, do another cut, rip off a piece, do another cut, rip off a piece. So we'll just keep going. So I cut one over each size. Um, I want, I got an extra one for each size. Just in case I mess up, I have some spares and I don't have to reset myself. Um, so now I'm just getting those little fillets off from when I did the ripping and just getting the burn marks cleaned up. And this is kind of boring stuff, so I won't make you sit through all of it. I promise. I've done a little quick rough test with one end of, a sh of, of one of these and uh, just wanted to see how tough it'll be to cope this into these. And so I just kind of did a miter because you typically do a miter then you'll take a, you'll take a coping saw or a scroll saw or something and then you'll come in and just cut out that profile there and then wherever it touches. But the problem I have is on this profile there's a part that's going to get really, really thin with nothing behind it. And I don't think that'll look good, and I think it'll glue poorly and all that sort of stuff. So I started toying with the idea of uh, mitering all of these instead. So I can pull these apart and just miter the, apply, the integral molding part of this. It's actually not tough, I think. I think I can do that, and I'm probably going to do that, at the very least, on these perpendicular connections. Up here where the arch is, I think I still have to cope. Um, so what I'm going to try now is... I think maybe I'll pull out my scroll saw and see if I can't cut this out to some degree and then I can file or something, get them close. Um, so I'm just going to, I'm, I'm goofing around here to see what I can and cannot get away with. Um, we'll see. We're going to, I have enough extra that I'm not too worried about the experimenting and I think we're going to be able to get something viable. So let me yank out the scroll saw. I'm also, at this point, I think. Maybe not quite, yeah, maybe I will take it apart. I'm deciding whether or not to take it apart. I think I will take it apart because I can, I can tell the cope by this method. Yeah, I can do that. Okay, I'm gonna tear this down and we'll pull out the scroll saw and we'll see how I can do it with the cope, how the cope works, whether I can cope with this. Hardy, 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 har. Okay, I've got the scroll saw out. We're gonna give this a try. I think the saw might be a tiny bit loud for this task, so we'll see how well this does on the video, but I'm just going to take very nice, very light nibbles at it, and I'm just following this contour here. So we'll see. Um, let's, let's just go for it. If the noise is too bad, I'll just music you guys. That's not too bad, is it? but I'm very out of scroll saw practice here. Mm, well, it's cutting. Take that straight chunk. That and then knit it like this, maybe.
I don't know if that's good or bad what I did there, but I'm kind of using the sideways motion here to that's really tough for you guys to see I'm sure, but Okay, so we've kind of got what might be a good coat. We'll see. I'm going to take it here and see how it fits into that. Not anywhere near enough in a lot of places. Let's start by this bottom flat spot here. Feels like a start. Sorry, um, I'm gonna pull you guys out. You can take a peek at what I've got. All right. So we've got, you know, our little cut lines here, like that. You can see there. And we go to try to mate to mate them to this, and it's kind of there, but it's uh, it's obvious that 45 is too much. It's not gonna work. Not for. Not for this um, at this angle. That puts us way close to this. So what it looks like is I've got to find the magic angle that is probably like 50-something degrees. Something closer to 90. And, uh, and figure out what that magic number is. I'm going to do that on a longer piece because there's no point in practicing on my short bits here. Okay, I think I have a bit of a process now. I've already done the, I've done the, the right side ones here. Um, I can't really show you really easily right now, but I will show you eventually. But these fit pretty good. And so I've worked up a process. And I'm going to walk through it when I do the left side ones here. Um, and it all starts with a miter cut that's less than 45. It's more like 35 or 40, 37, somewhere in there. That cuts off... That goes this way. That cuts off the, the chunk, and then we take away some of the back. So I'm going to work through this process. I'm going to do it a couple of times because I want to make sure I capture all the pieces. But we start with a miter that's a little less than 45. Start there. Voila, the magic of television. You have a very less than 35 miter in this place. Okay, step two of this process is to get rid of some of this crap in the back. And I do that over on the sander, so I'll be right back. I don't think you need me to show you the sanding process. It's just a matter of sand back as far as you can without hitting this profile at all. Et voila, here you are. You have a nice, can you see the facet to say? There are several facets. It's just a matter of just leaving as much, um, or taking as much as I can to get as close to that edge of that profile as possible, because we're going to use sanding methods to get down right onto it. Now the next step yep. is to take my rasp to this a little and just, I'm trying to dive into this belly here. You can't really see what I'm doing, but I'm trying to dive into this belly here. So I'm just trying to hold on to it nice. And uh, sometimes you have to go with the grain first before it'll let you go against the grain. And so I'm just gingerly sneaking up on the profile there. I'll show you here in detail in just a second what's coming up here. And I'm just basically trying to get this profile to be the leading profile here. And just try not to take too much from the keeping zones here. But the method I was working with before was doing reasonably well, so this process should be pretty easily defined. But I'm just basically getting in there with a, a coarse removal tool first to try to get us in the ballpark first. 
because that needs to be back away. So, okay, now I'll show you this. Et voilà, we have the very, very, very basic rough. See, they just basically champered away and just made a trough. See the trough there? And I still left all of my front of my profile. No removal here. I'm still actually going to go back beyond this because this angle isn't quite perfect. But what the idea is, is we're just trying to get as much out of the way as we possibly can as, with as few effort, with as little effort as possible. Because um, now is the, the next step is kind of the annoying process. It's just a matter of sanding. So I'm going to show you that in a minute. Okay. What I've got down here is just a scrappy, scrappies, a scrappy with that same profile cut on it. But now it's the mating. So it's the thing that's going to cope my same, same profile. The trick is, is that's on the arc, so it's not going to meet it at 90. I can't just do this. I have to do back a bit so that it sort of matches what the arc will do. And so I just hold my sandpaper in place. It's sticky back, but it's a little bit, it wants to move a little bit. So I start by a back beveling process and try not to do that to your sandpaper. And you'll see where we're touching. I'll bring you up into this. You can see this. You'll see here. We're rubbing mostly right there, and it's going to cut back some of this profile. Just That's because I didn't get the angle perfect. But none to worry. This is the final step, and it'll take 10 minutes maybe. Um, I'm going to pull away and give you some happy music while I continue to do this until it fits. And I'll just keep checking over and over. Okay, so that one came out well. That one's good, it's in good shape. So that's now nicely coped to fit. You'll see we did sand a fair ways into it, but by taking away most of the stuff, it saved a lot of time. Quite a lot of bit, quite a lot of bit of time. Quite a lot of bit of time, quite a bit of time. So that's three down. I got one more to do, and I'm just gonna record that one all the way through. <laughs> Okay, so this is, I'm gonna miter, so I wanna, I wanna make sure that I'm mitering. So what I'm gonna do, well, I'm going to be mitering these ends now. So the idea is that a stick of trim will be mitered uh, like such and go in like this. Oh, it's very tough for you to see, isn't it? Let's see if I can do this in a more visible Visible manner. So this will go here. I want to miter right here. And so to miter these ends, I'm going to miter this integral part of it as well. So I'm going to, I'm set up to do that. And I wanted to show you this bit. So before I start cutting, um, I've got my small miter gauge with the bar, the extrusion, the aluminum extrusion on it. And that has the piece clamped vertically. Um, I'm going to move this clamp down some so that it clamps it in a better location. And we're basically just holding this to the miter gauge so I can slide it around. And it's sticking out <coughs> more than enough to get mitered. <laughs> Alright, so made a slight mistake, miscalculation, error in judgment, whatever you would call it. Uh, the saw, when tilted at 45, doesn't when you elevate the blade it's not going to cut up now the miter the blade travels in the plane of the miter so the whole raising the blade idea to sneak up on it it didn't work it wasn't going to work it was doomed to fail doomed i say doomed to fail doomed it was doomed to fail so new setup got my uh stop block on the miter gauge now it's, this stop is kind of cool. It's got a, a little micro adjust. So all I've got to do is tweak this and go boink to move it around. So I can do boink. Now I can and then move it forward. So all of, what it comes down to is I've got to clamp and reclamp, but hopefully that's not going to be a big problem. We need to move a little teeny tiny bit. And I believe if I did this all correctly, 
one stop should put things in exactly the right place. Um, I'm a little scared to trust that. At the moment, I don't know why. I don't know why. Yes, uh, I think it's fine. It'll do fine for this board for sure. And as long as, I mean, as long as we're exactly the same length on these ends, we should be all right. Um, anyway, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play with that. I'm gonna get it so it's cutting a little bit closer. So I just figured I'd mention that I'm a, I'm a not a thinking just correctly. So I, I wasn't thinking right. So now I'm thinking better, maybe. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna try to dial in this miter once more. Figure I'd explain the process here. So it's unclamp, unset these two guys just a little bit, and then dial in just a tiny movement. That was about a half a turn, and that's a lot of threads. And then I'm going to reclamp because I want it to stay put. And we run another, take another pass. That worked really, really well. I barely moved it and it barely cut, so I'm confident that I can sneak up on this joint really easily. And that last turn was about a half turn. I'm going to go another probably core, full full turn or three quarters of a turn somewhere in there because that half turn only moved it a teeny tiny bit okay got a hold of it let's do another cut Okay, that worked really well, I think. I can pull this off now and take a peek at it. Yeah, that miter is exactly where I want it and it's in both sides, so that's good. Although I do see something I did mess up. Um, I thought it was out of square, so I kept adjusting the miter gauge to square. Turns out that particular piece had a tiny little boo-boo in the, in the end of the mold cutting of the profile cut so I've got to put it back to square I believe that's going to change this so I'm going to have to do one more sneak up I'm going to pull this back a fair bit And then we're going to flip it around, do the exact same cut. This time I'll sneak up and then hopefully that means it'll cut right in the same spot on the other two. So we'll just flip it around. This should be a one, one and done cut here. No, it won't be a one and done. I still have to sneak up. I pulled it back a little. All right, we're going to do one more cut. All right, that first one works really well. That was good. I'm pleased as heck. Those are right where the miter stops right where it's supposed to. Cool. The real test is whether this stop can be used for the next boards or the next board. Will the stop get in my way? It will not. That's a good sign already. In theory, if I'm a, if I'm a betting man, this will work just fine on the first shot. Let's double check real quick one thing. I want to make sure my lengths are about the same. It's a tiny bit less. So I think that's a tiny bit less. Okay, they seem to be about the same. I'm, I'm sort of scared. So that one's got that little hoochie thing. That one's got the little hoop thing. Okay. All right, well, let's... Uh, I'm just going to give it a go. Live on the edge, right? If it doesn't work, I rip it off and I put, I cut two new pieces of molding. Whoop de doo, right? Whoop de doo. Whoop de doo. All right, live on the edge. Take no prisoners. 
Ready? Cut time. Let's see if I start cussing here in a second. <laughs> No cussing. That was perfect. Right where it belongs. Beautiful. Let's flip it to the other side. Beautiful. I love it when a plan comes together. That worked well. Okay. Pleased that those miters came out good. Very nice. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. I love it. I love it. All right. Enough celebration. I think it's time we put this back together and cut our molding bits. I'm going to. Um, I wonder if I should do another another bit of dry fit or if I should get those panels ready to go first. I believe that we're going to put a dry fit together one more and then we'll get everything nice and tiny fit and then we'll be ready to go. As I was dry fitting, I started to really ponder the assembly process, and I think I've decided to do the trim of the molding, like cutting those miters and stuff, after it's glued together, because then it's in its final stage, and I can get the fit beautiful. Um, so instead of doing that now, I am going to get the panels ready, and I need to start thinking about the sliding mechanism because that's got to get mounted before I glue it up. The idea that I've got, I'll show you about that in a second. But I wanted to mention that I just changed my mind about the doing the dry fit bit because that changed. So it makes more sense to worry about the molding after it's entirely completely together because then I can get those joints, I can make those joints as perfect as possible that way. Um, so we're going to stand her back up again. Actually, I found it easier to take this apart laying down. So that's what I'm going to do this time. Right. They're big pieces, but they're simple pieces. There's nothing to them. All right. Uh, ta -da. We got to work out some bit of work holding so that I can uh, work these panels a bit. That's what I think I'll do next. Let's get the panels actually. You know something, these panels can wait. Do I want to start on that mechanism now? I'll think about that and come up with a decision. <laughs> mm -hmm. 